That wasn't the whole march. It was enough. <laughs> Welcome to Covendom. This is episode nine, season four. Tonight's episode is going to be Secret Societies or the Secret Society in Witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm your host, Brian Kane. This is Levi Rowland, and this is Ellie Barnes. We are all high priesthood of the Alexandrian tradition of witchcraft. We are coming to you live from Hex, New Orleans, where Ellie and I run the New Orleans coven, and Levi runs the Pontchartrain coven. I said that right, right? You did. Um, Wonderful. Yes. Um, Tonight's episode is going to be about secret societies, but before we get into the secret society of witchcraft, I want to just kind of promote a couple of things. So we do have Hexfest coming up, mm-hmm. and I believe the dates are August 8th through 12th, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going from the top of my brain, but it's, you can find it on Hexwitch. I think it's 12 through 14. 12 through 14, you are correct, I think. So you can find that at hexfest.com. If you haven't bought your tickets, please come join us. We'll all be there. We will. Um, we've also been promoting Sabbath rituals for the stores in uh Hex New Orleans and Omen Salem. So there is a Sabbat ritual at both stores every for every Sabbat, um, hosted by the New Orleans Coven and the Salem Coven, or members thereof. The whole coven isn't always there, and it is not a coven function. But they've been really wonderful. It's been a great way to celebrate the goddess and the seasons and get to know people. So we're so happy to be able to resume that. We did it for years and then had that nasty bout of COVID in 2020 yes, that did. put it aside for a couple of years. So we've been able to finally get the wheels rolling and we're doing it in both areas. At the moment, I'm trying to attend all of them, but that will not always be the case. Um, you are now, though. It's the Brian Kane. Tour. The Sabbath the tour. tour. The full the tour. The full tour of the year. Are, you're showing up in New Orleans and Salem for every Sabbath public yes, ritual. Right now. ritual. Right now I am. Um, so tonight's episode is going to be on the Secret Society of Witchcraft. And before we get into that, uh, Ellie's going to begin our icebreaker. I have no idea what is coming. So None of us do. I'm going to pass it on to Ellie. Thank you. Well, nobody knows, so you get the idea, they, we talk about it, and then we start doing some reading and research, and, and so tonight um, Real we're talking, quick, before you start, um, this is a call-in show, so if you guys are interested in calling in, the number's on the screen, 309 Goddess. If you call in, you'll be put into a queue, we do not accept block numbers. So we'll put you on hold and we'll take your call as soon as possible. I have to remember to look at the camera, not I the know. screen. It's so that tempting. didn't used to be right there, so it's, it's distracting me. I want to look at myself. Um, yeah. So go ahead and call in. We love to hear your call-in questions. That is what makes the show um, interesting to us. But if you ask questions in the chat, we will be more than happy to mm-hmm. answer them. And sorry, now on to Ellie. And we see all your lovely comments. And, right, and we live stream on YouTube, Facebook, yeah, yep. do the Hex, Hex Education, Education channel. So like and, and like and subscribe on YouTube. That's, right. That's really where the archive is. You can find the shows perpetually on Facebook, but the archive is real on YouTube. None of us go looking for videos on Facebook, do we? No. So like and s- subscribe. You can find that on Hex Education or just search Coven Dunn. That's right. So you can find us and watch, and we read your comments. We answer them we do. live. We do. And you can call us and talk to us right now. Okay. So, <clears throat> secret societies, I focused on groups in Europe and the United States. Okay. Levi might add some comments about occult groups in the East. There must be them, right? We will. We'll then there talk are about initiatory it. groups. Yes, we'll talk so, about it tonight. So, I'm focusing on the West, and I looked up groups that had secret societies and their main symbols or philosophic ideas and i'm going to spout out a symbol or idea okay and we have to name the group we have to yes, name the group yes but I, i've got several symbols or ideas so okay. i can keep adding on okay and so we're going to really think I believe europe, in us. europe and <clears throat> the united states and some of these even at the end are really interesting and we're not going to know them but when i when i say them you're going to say yes okay okay special handshake Masons. The Masons. What kind of masonry? Free Stone, Stone Mason. Operative or speculative? I would think speculative. No. Operative masonry. Operative. That's this Stone Masons. Yes, yeah. this is the idea. That, um, when you but just, speculative masons, masons do still do the handshakes. They do, they do. Yeah. You're right, they do. But I looked at... Because there are no operative masons anymore. That's right. 
Yeah. Not as good. I am also yeah. right. <laughs> So, so Freemasonry. So, so how, yeah. about, how about the compass, the square, and the pelican? I'm still Masons. And the pelican. I don't know what the pelican is, but the compass and square. The Scottish is right? The pelican eat mother eats out of her own breast. Yeah, it's for Jesus. Jesus. I know the symbol. Is it the Scottish right? Can be. Can okay, so it's Freemasonry okay. in general. Um, all right. The suspense. Within Freemasonry, there's an especially... Are we ever getting off of Freemasonry? <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> the whole evening. I thought we were guessing. There's an especially high order. The ancient Arabic order nobles of the Mystic Shrine, founded in 18... The Shriners. In, night, in New York City, yes. The Shriners. Okay. She didn't even get to the symbol. <clears throat> Next group of symbols. The island of Cyprus, banking, and the cross of Lorraine. Uh, Martinism. Wait, the Cross of Lorraine and what? Knight Templar? Yes. The Knight's Templar. The, the, yeah. island, the Island of Cyprus and Banking and the Cross of Lorraine. Okay, I only heard the Cross of Lorraine thing. And these are all secret societies. Oh, this, okay. one's, this one's really cute. I did not know this. I knew it was as a group, but I didn't know who started it. A group of actors, musicians, and entertainers in New York City in 1868 created an order, of a fraternal order. Uh, the Temple of Psychic Youth. To, to play a place of brotherly support and fellowship, and their letters are B P O E. B P O E. B P O E. Benevolent and protective order of. I don't know. No clue. Elks. The Elks Lodge. Oh, oh good my God. No one they even a secret society. I thought that was just they like are. a place where no, you're. No, they are. And they follow okay. Freemasons. Alcoholic okay. relatives hung <laughs> out. <laughs> Went to go to charity events. Okay, so the Elks Lodge, right. gotcha. This is the motto of a very, very famous English fraternity. Okay, this is their this is their major motto of how they help. Visit the sick, relieve the distressed, bury the dead, and educate the orphan. Salvation Army. <laughs> close. Close, close. Um, so it's Christian. It's a Christian. Yes, in that um, flavor of... In the flavor of the But Salvation it's English. Order. Independent English. order of the... So, uh, you know, the women with the... Odd Fellows. The Odd Fellows, uh, the charitable okay. organization. All okay. right. The next one you're going to get, the I, <laughs> the I in the triangle, Bavaria, Germany. The Illuminati. Yes. Yeah. The, super the Bavarian Illuminati. Yes. Um, this secret society founded at Yale University in New Haven. Skull and Crossbones. Skull and Crossbones. <laughs> Skull and Crossbones. They made a horror movie about it. The rose, the red rose on the cross. The Rosicrucians. And the life of Christian Rosicruz. Yeah. The mystical wedding, the chemical wedding of Christian Rosicruz. <laughs> Think, visualize this, you guys. The eye of Horus. Okay. And the flying dove in the precious mm. vessel. The OTO. Yes. The OTO. The cross above a triangle with a rising sun in the triangle. Hermetic order of the golden dawn. Yes. Oh, here's a great one. Hidden meanings in art and drawings. Think about the biggest scientific secret society. Science. Oh, science. God. I'm not really good at this trivia game today. I know L. Ron Hubbard's thing. Scientology? I almost, I almost put a... Scientology. Uh, um, I don't know, Ellie. What is um, it? Alchemy. Alchemy. Oh, that's not a secret society. It isn't, but, but all trick of question. the symbols and writings and everything are hidden. In trick the question. It's called the occult. We'll accept it. <laughs> we'll accept it for now. All right. Ellie wins. A toad bone, a toad bone, or a charm made with horse bone, tooth, and hair. In England. In the, England. A toad bone, the... The Covenant of Atho? No. Robert uh, Cochran's uh, stuff, 777. The Toadsman. The toads I've never, heard of, never toad. heard of that. And what? In the Horseman's Guild in Trad Witchcraft? Y'all have not heard of the No, because I usually don't believe in Trad Witchcraft. That's the problem. <laughs> Brian and I have opinions. Very no, I mean, I believe in some check, of it. But check yeah. this out. When your kids go off to college, one of the things they come home and say is, I could join a... Fraternity. Or... Sorority. Cult. Those are... <laughs> cult. Those are secret Mom, I societies want to join the witch cult. I would say that's true. They have initiation and they are. protocol yeah. that are not they given are. out to the rest of the population. Oh, yeah, Greek life. Some of them are real. And then the last one, witchcraft. Witchcraft is a secret society. You should have given us a symbol. Well, <laughs> but, well, but it still is. 
We All right, and so there's a lot more. And we have a lot Let's to talk about. Pass it on to okay. what are we, Levi. I'm, you see, I'm making hand gestures, but they're off camera, so just know that I'm very animated. Okay. Like, um, so yes, tonight we're talking about secret societies, and I think this is a perfect topic for three people who are initiated into what is actually a living secret society in some ways, right? You know, we do fulfill the same sort of qualifications and ideas that you'll see in other secret societies and other occult groups throughout history. And I think tonight we're going to hit on some, some major points, and I, so I don't want to spoil too much by giving a long-winded intro. But what I want to say is, we live in a very unique time, I think, you know, honestly, in, in comparison to the past, where information is entirely almost it, public. You know, there, are, there is not a lot of privacy anymore in the modern world if you happen to be digitally connected, as most people are. So it's a fascinating thing to exist in the culture of TikTok and Instagram and algorithms that, you know, keep track of everything you do, your voice, the timber of your voice, what you're interested in politically or spiritually to tell you what socks to buy on Amazon. We exist at the same time as that while we also participate in this incredibly underground sort of ideology. And I think that tension is something that's pretty fascinating and I think it's something we're going to talk about tonight. I also think what we're going to talk about tonight is the sort of lineage of why people throughout spiritual histories in various traditions and various world religions have had these concepts of secret societies, of initiatory cults, of occult orders, tantra in the East. I think we're going to hit a lot on that and why. The big question I want us thinking about tonight is why would you want something to be secret? You know, there are a lot of spiritual teachers who are very adamantly opposed to things like this. But can you not? actually read these questions? Yeah, I can. Uh, I can't see them. I see all your comments, by the way, yes. <clears throat> but yeah, that's what I want to start with, is the lineages we're going to talk about, why you would even want to be a part of a secret society, and what that really means in spiritual terms in a world that is desperately not secret. Finished? I'm finished. Right, I'll go next. So, um, Levi and Ellie and I sort of formulated this show and a few of other shows before we ended up having to take our break because of different schedules and things going on. We're not always able to be consistent every week, which I think, you know, we'll get a bunch yeah. done before we Hacks Fest. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't know if we'll get it all done before Hacks Fest, so there may be a bit of a lull, but we probably will have the season done before October, I think. Um, and it's been, it's been fabulous. It's, it's been kind of interesting because we've had to go through all the former episodes to make sure we're not repeating ourselves too much. Yeah. Although some subjects could bear repeating multiple times and still be a different conversation. But one of the things that has come up on multiple occasions, and like Levi is saying um, tonight, is, well, when Levi's not being nice, you know, he accuses people of having FOMO, yes. you know, fear of missing out, and he's correct. I think there's an assumption in this digital world that all the cards are on the table, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have this show was to remind, state, tease, entice that they are not. You know, Correct. as Alexandrians, we are less secretive than some uh, might be, but we still have our secrets. We are an initiatory mystery cult, We're, you know, and that's one of the things that I think people forget. You know, Gardnerian, Alexandrian witchcraft and our covens they really do operate in many ways as other occult fraternities or lodges. You know, if you look at the structure of the Masons, for instance, there is an entire organization of what Masonry is. They've got their texts, they've got their rituals, they have all these things in common. But every lodge actually functions autonomously. And it is only up to that lodge as to who may be members of it. And it's only those members who truly know what's going on within those walls. You know, they're all, they all share the same thing in common. If you go to another Masonic Lodge and they, they can vouch that you are a Mason, they will let you in. But for membership, it's still up to them whether they want to bring you into that Lodge. They might accept you as a brother, but they're not necessarily going to say you get to join their Lodge. So witchcraft is very, very similar. You know, there are secrets, you know, and as Alexandrians we say there are no secrets, only mysteries. But we also say, you know, we'll answer any question, but we won't tell you what we don't want you to know. And we believe that a lot of these secrets have to be experienced. 
but a very good example is that we run a separate coven from Levi, mm -hmm. all right? You all know we all come from the same place, but the reality of it is there's now a bit of secrecy between us because I don't know exactly what's going on in his circle and he doesn't know exactly what's going on in mine and we don't ask, you know. Um, sometimes we tell each other things, but we don't ask, right? So that's how it works, you know, and it doesn't matter what I think about Levi's covenant, it doesn't matter what he thinks about mine, and that's true of the entire world. So there are lots of covens we love, and there are covens that we don't know anything about, and there are covens we have and will work with, and there are covens we would never work with. But they're autonomous. You know, the only thing a tradition really has is this overarching idea of what that tradition is. But witchcraft is an occult secret society. We're not trying to create the illusion to you that we're all in one big swimming pool, that we're all friends, and that we're all living in a magical Harry Potter world you are not invited to. I because mean, the truth of it is, dreams. those secrets are lived in, the, in those covens. You know, the life of an initiate is, is truly within their coven. And when you're exposed to social media groups or larger things that try to promote this sort of Vatican type you know, they can't sit with us, or we own this whole thing, or we're going to tell you who the real authentic thing is. That's actually a, a red flag, just so you know. They should be very busy working in their own covens and minding their own business. That's a very old craft thing. And as Elliot is going to tell you, and probably Levi too on other subjects, we're not the only ones. No. You know, in our coven, Ellie and I's coven, because um, I won't speak for you anymore, uh, we practice the no socializing rule. And we adopted that probably from the Rosicrucians. You know, and Ellie's more familiar with that than I am because she was initiated into other things. Um, you know, I'm an initiate of witchcraft and that's been my primary secret society. And when I first was initiated, it wasn't into Alexandrian witchcraft. It was into a very small, um, homegrown what would now be considered traditional craft circle, right? And it was, you know, very much that way. But it had its secrets and it had its secret identity and the things we were doing together in those covens were for the people in those covens. I don't even really discuss those circles with my covens now because it's not something that crosses over completely, right? So I think... What's wise, what's great, is that we do have all this information on our fingertips. The problem is, is that having that much accessible information also means there's a lot of disinformation, yep. and probably more disinformation than accurate information, and it's difficult to ascertain. But my witchcraft does operate within generations of people who have been practicing within a priesthood that is a mystery cult, a secret society, you know, um, a religion. So I think it's just nice to kind of remind people that it's not all on the table, because I think we could say that about any type of magical tradition. People want to believe they know what's going on in a Masonic uh, lodge. People want to believe they know what's going on in the OTO, and they want to believe they know what's going on in a witchcraft circle. And they may have more ideas now than they did in the 1960s, but the truth of the matter is you don't know anything until you know. Right? Correct. All right. Ellie. I love that idea. This is what I think, this is the way I thought about this idea, and the way I think about many occult subjects. I take my mind and my third eye backwards in time to as far back as I can sort of feel that mankind is aware of itself and processing information. And I ask, what, what would happen in the beginning? And I think right away, certain types of people working on similar activity, like maybe built stone masonry or herbalism or contacting spirits or doing healing work, would gravitate towards each other, trust each other, work together privately and seriously, and develop symbols and vocabulary that they could use together yeah. to ensure that they could quickly 
work safely and know each other. It just makes a lot of sense to me. In, in even the hunters or gatherers, or they would have developed ways of quicker, safer communication because they'd experienced the same thing. And then that can go in many directions, and we know we've got such a broad range of secret societies. And it's twofold. First of all, it is limited to the people really doing it or studying it. So you want some code words. It's just like going to a, if you go to an MD, you want to see his certificate on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other side of it is that it's internal. The spiritual work we do can't really be talked about, so that's secret too. I think it's external and internal. But I think from early on, mankind grouped himself into group practices and ideas and developed symbolism between them. And it's still going on today. No, yeah, correct. So, so do we know for sure if the phones were working? Because we haven't done this in a long time. It's a... Poor Levi is not actually See, much more technically advanced than I am, but I true. expect him to be. <laughs> not true. Uh, so it is working. All right. I'm doing all right. So we're going to ask you to call in, or we're just turning the whole thing off. <laughs> we do have a com we do have questions. Oh, comments. good. One from Liz, um, and I think this is a great question to sort of comment on what you were speaking about. All of us, really. Do you think if there was more, there were more interconnections between covens that we would organize better and accomplish more? as a whole. Oh, I hope not. Mm -hmm. I think that is religion. and will be the demise of the craft for anyone who gets involved in that sort of thing. The craft, you know, as far as like a coven structure craft, isn't meant to be uh, uncloistered. You know, the way we work for the world is magically. It's not supposed to be politically. It's supposed to be magically. So when you get into these sort of interconnections, everything I hate about modern witchcraft and every negative experience that I have encountered has been from people trying to do that because people corrupt it. Mm -hmm. And one of the beautiful things about the autonomy and the small number of people that can be in a coven, 3 to 13 people, is if it becomes corrupt, it has very little effect on the world. It just withers away on its own. But when you get a group of nine or ten uh, covens who are all going to beat their drums about what it is and they're going to bully everyone who's not, it becomes corrupt. It's not very magical. It becomes the worst part of social media. And I've seen it. I mean, I literally can conjure people and situations in my mind now. When it comes to changing laws and when it comes to like fighting oppression and things like that, I understand why people would want us to be a voice in that, but we don't need to do it in that way. You can do it as a person. You know, you can do it as a human being. There are many wonderful organizations we can all get behind. You certainly can use your voice. I can use my voice and say I'm a high priest of witchcraft and I don't believe this. I don't think that my uh, religion really would support it and this is what we think about it. But I'm not going to try to make the craft a political weapon. No. You know, I think that that's very much not what we're about. In fact, Alex and Maxine had a rule, which a lot of occult fraternities do, that politics were not to be brought up. The Masons have that rule. You know, um, I think you've done it before too. And I think that it's very wise because it corrupts the magic. You know, we're not, we're not concerned so much with who you're voting for and that sort of thing in the magic circle. We only would bring that in in very dire situations, in my opinion. Yeah. You guys? And I think maybe do something privately or separately, but not as a group. That would be really generally. Yeah. For the good of something. I think that we do we do interconnect privately, uh, but we do we don't really have a public, I would say, unified organization the way that you do in Christianity. You know, we don't have an Anglican communion. You know, we don't have the Vatican. I don't think you can because witchcraft is not a world religion. You know, and that's that's just. A fact. You know, witchcraft is not a world religion. And so trying to, whenever people try to force it to be one, I think, as Brian was talking about, it goes a bit wonky. You know, I think it goes a bit wrong. So do world religions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean... You know, we, trying we to get just, every yeah. Catholic to agree on a subject. Sure, they've got the Pope to declare something. But, but that doesn't mean they all believe no. it. Right, you know. But I think we especially Sorry. are silent. No, you're right. I think we're especially silent on what we're asked to do. 
healings or help or work uh, with a family or job or something. If Levi's Coven decides yeah. to do magic <coughs> to, to, you know, keep Donald Trump from running again, I'll never know it. You yeah. know, it's not any of my coven's business. He's not going to go on the internet and talk about it. So real initiates and real witches are not going to go on the internet and talk about the work that they're doing because it should be secret. To know, to will, to dare, and to keep silent is a magical recipe for success. Yeah. So the people who are chatting about it online are usually not initiates. And when they are, I wonder why they're doing it and where they got their training. But, you know, it's, it's you know, not something we would discuss openly anyway. So a follow-up question from another user uh, on YouTube says, then you choose not to participate in things like pagan pride festivals, or like there are a lot of those things in, in the culture right now. I'll let you guys speak before I do. We, well, I mean, we do. We just, we, we just told you we were all going to be a Hexfest, right? So we do actually participate in festivals, and we do participate in magical organizations. We have WitchCon, but there's a difference. What we tend to participate in, and I can't speak for them, but I will say what I've noticed from them and what I do is we do tend to um, sort of associate ourselves with things where there's going to be teaching happening, where there's a possibility of learning something. I don't think we do a lot of what might be called fellowshipping, you know, with other people who identify as pagan. That's not something yeah, I have no. personally done a lot, no. No, I think we certainly are joining Hexfest and WitchCon as friends and fellows in our coven and mm -hmm. in our shops and working together. Uh, it's not an emotional connection necessarily. It's a teaching connection. Yeah. Right. And we want to give space and give out information in lots of different categories and areas where we can be public, where we can be public. Yeah, it's a different thing, though. We're not sharing our religion. No. Um, for me, I've got a very long relationship with uh, pagan prides and uh, pagan communities. Every, every city across the United States and probably elsewhere has some sort of pagan pride group thing going on. And I'm certainly not anti to it. Um, it's just, 